Welcome, LA Progressive friends and family. Today, I, Sharon Kyle, am here to talk to Greg Achille. Now, he and I, before I press the, the record button, we were talking about how we met because we've known each other for several, many years, I'm sure over a decade. And um, he said, well, maybe it was when he worked with Antonio de Aragosa or with Herb Wesson. For those of you who don't know um, Herb Wesson, he is a longtime Los Angeles politician, was on the city council and, and maybe Herb was on the state assembly. I don't know, but I didn't live speaker. in her district. He was what? He was speaker. He was speaker, he was speaker. of the state assembly, yes. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't even remember that. I don't know how long ago that was. But needless to say, he is a lifelong activist. Um, he himself also ran for the California State Assembly. He was born in Jacksonville, Florida. Hey. His career experience includes working as an educator, an organizer, a director, a project coordinator. He's been affiliated with the UCLA Labor Studies Department, Black Lives Matter Grassroots, and the Fannie Lou Hammer Institute. I mean, the list is really, really long. I'm not going to tell you how old Greg is, um, but for him to have done all of this, you know, this he's He's lived on this planet a little while. I was actually surprised when he told me how old he was because he's so young, vibrant. And I understand that he's about to become a newlywed, but I'll leave it up to him if he wants to talk about that. Greg, <laughs> <laughs> for joining me. So today we're going to be talking about Cop City. You want to you want to tell our people a little bit about Cop City? Yes, and thank you so much, uh, Sharon, for inviting me. And uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Um, in response to the 2020 global uprising in defense of Black lives um, uh, and the murder of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and uh, Ahmaud Arbery, and we can you know we can kind of go through the list uh, that that happened around in in 2020. Cities across the country began pushing for construction of militarized police training centers. And they were known as cop cities. And I guess the, the, the most famous one was the one in, uh, in uh, Atlanta, uh, where the city of Atlanta agreed to spend $90 million to create this um, cop city. Uh, and like I said, the most well-known cop city, uh, the one that people are most familiar with um, is the one in Atlanta. And it's also the most tragic one because um, in the people in, in and around the area pushed back and were unwilling to accept it. And it wound up in the death of a young activist, a 26-year-old um, organizer, Torte Gita, uh, was killed um, in Atlanta in an effort to stop Cop City. Uh, and since then, it has become a national movement. Uh, well, two things have happened. One, uh, about 84 cities around the country are proposing or in the process of developing some form of cop city, um, you know, in, and uh, and some and, and what they are doing is militarizing the police, uh, and uh, you know, un under the guise of and and you hear what the one of the presidential candidates talks about uh, the enemy within. Uh, and you know we know that uh, in the in, during his administration uh, he wanted to call out the the, the national guards and the uh, even the army on protesters, and so um, that's that's been what's happening at a national level. And it was felt that they, we needed a national response. So the movement for Black Lives uh, convened uh, a group of uh, organizations in August. Um, a lot of uh, organizations who were doing work around Free Palestine because they were being targeted. A lot of uh, uh, groups that that had been working on political prisoners uh, and convened this grouping in August. Um, and Black Lives Matter's grassroots was a part of it. Um, and the movement to stop Cop City, the coalition that wound up developing, is a vehicle to advance a unified struggle for liberation and against the expansion of of the, the militarization of uh, the police and Black Lives Matter's uh, grassroots is a part of that. Uh, and so we are going to be in uh, our, tomorrow, October 22nd, is a National Day of Action. Uh, it started in 1996 with the uh, a call to stop police brutality. Uh, 
Um, and so that's part of the uh, the call tomorrow, but also uh, in conjunction with or along with that call is a call to stop cop nations. Um, and so uh, in 25 cities around the country, there will be actions uh, drawing attention to these um, the stop, you know, these, these cop nations now, uh, their effort to militarize uh, our police force uh, and direct it. And whenever I hear urban, it always you can just take out urban and put black uh, to in, uh, in order to uh, control um, the urban areas in the event of uprisings. So that's a little bit about uh, Cop City and and um, and the movement for Black Lives that uh, that convened and created a national coalition to respond. So I'm gonna, to national, so um, I'm in this piece. I'm going to put some links into um, websites um, that uh, that address this because I found a couple of websites where you can go and get more information, mm -hmm. but. Um, I, I was driving down the street one day uh, a few years ago and Kenneth Mejia is the control of Los Angeles and he was running for office and he had put up this billboard in Los Angeles. It was a, um, a chart that showed the amount of funding that is given to the LAPD and then compared it to the funding that we provide to um to social, various social social programs. And while he wasn't establishing a relationship in terms of the cause of the problems of the deficiencies in social problem in social programs, he did not indicate that the deficiencies are due to how much we give to the police department. He just showed the difference and he showed the difference over time. So as we proceed through the years, the more we give to police, the less we give to education. The more we give to police, the less we give to childcare. And so this militarization of the borders, the uh, really militarization of the police forces, because that's what Cop City does. It's not, um, it, well, wh why don't you talk about what kind of training these police are getting in and where is this training coming from? Well, it's coming from, uh, well, first of all, the training is around how to uh, contain, suppress, and oppress um, um, I, Black people, Brown people, Indigenous people, and working poor people, uh, and to make sure that they don't uh, e express their opposition. And you see what's happening now with the Free Palestine Movement. Uh, and the relate And the connection is that a lot of the training and a lot of the emphasis is coming from uh, the Israeli uh, internet and the um, uh, uh, IDF uh, because they have learned and are applying um, these tactics of suppression and oppression in the in, in occupied Palestine uh, and so they, they they have these relationships where um, the IDF people are coming here training um, uh, police about Basically, how to suppress um, uh, public comment, public protest, public outrage, um, and you know that's that's what it is. Uh, and the fact that they have this this relationship, the fact that that uh, that a lot of the emphasis is is, uh, is and and the lessons from what is happening in Gaza and throughout the, the occupied territories is being imported. Uh, and implemented in the U.S. is an indication. So, um, you know, that's why you know there is this uh, this national effort. But it's an it's a national movement to fight back against the national militarization, and it is directly connected to what's happening in Gaza, what's happening in 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 occupied Palestine. Uh, you know, because and uh, and as Kanahasi Coates has pointed out in his his book messages, um, it is clearly an apartheid state, and so there's a line between Jim Crow, apartheid South Africa, uh, what's happening in occupied Palestine, and what is what is what is intended to happen uh, in these cop cities around the country. A direct line. So one other aspect of this development of these cop cities is 
they tend to take um, space, um, green space. Um, I'm, I was reading here about the Atlanta cop city costing, like you said, $90 million and taking up over 85 acres of what was green space. And historic, I mean, this was, these were plantations. And then after the, uh, after the emancipation, those plantations turned into uh, sharecropping centers. And at one time it was a, um, a, uh, I think it was a, a, a farm prison or a prison, a farm, you know, farm prison. And then, um, the people, the indigenous people, were able to recapture it and take it over, uh, or take it back, uh, and now it's being turned over to, uh, you know, to Top City, uh, and 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 the same thing is happening around the country. Uh, and you mentioned earlier, you know, there was a recent article in the uh, in the recent article that came out that talked about L.A. is going bankrupt. Um, you know, we agreed to give the police uh, a, a billion dollar raise over the next four years. We agreed to do the Olympics in 2028. We agreed to do, um, you know, to to um, make sure that the police pension was taken care of. And you can't have it both ways. Uh, you know, and we just got a recent report about uh, the local um, reparations commission. Uh, here in Los Angeles, uh, and about the hurt, harm, and damage that was done to Black people from the time of the, the time the city was incorporated up until re up until now, and so uh, you know the police have taken up and are taking up a tremendous amount of, of general funds, and you got to make choices, uh, and and you know Black Lives Matter LA, we've had the People's Budget every year where we ask people how they want their money spent. And people want investments in infrastructure. They want investment in mental health. They want investment in housing uh, and all of the basic needs that, that people have to have to, to have a, a, a decent quality of life, but you can't have it both ways. And so with these emphasis on uh, these cop cities, uh, one of the ironic things back in May, when we was we started the planning for you know coming together, uh, so there were, there was a group of us in Atlanta. The water was shut off in almost half of Atlanta because of poor infrastructure. So on the one hand, Atlanta has allocated ninety million dollars for this uh, cop city, while at the same time the infrastructure is crumbling. Uh, you know now the other the other portion of the money that's coming from uh, to fund these cop cities is from major corporations. Um, you know, you and you see what they're doing out here in California with Prop 36. Um, they are fanning the uh, the, the 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 crime, uh, the sensationalizing crime. When in fact, crime is down in many areas, or at least flat in most areas. Um, but they're sensationalizing it. And so to under to, to say that we need more police and we need more cop cities. So, um, you know, if you look at the funders of, say, Prop 36, they're the same funders who are funneling money to uh, the um, Atlanta Police Foundation to help fund cop city. So you know this and I know this. What? What can we do? You know, I think that um, Black Lives Matter Grassroots is doing a fantastic job by reaching out to the Black independent media. And um, it's fantastic because it is a way to get the message out. But the masses are being hoodwinked. Oh, I mean, it really makes my stomach turn. I don't even want to talk about what I just heard on the news about the orange one talking about the size of Arnold Palmer's penis. Arnold Palmer's, ah, God, I mean, that is what the, the height world? of ridiculousness. Um, yeah, um, and, and what baffles me, much like you, is how could people, I mean, it, it even accept this. Uh, uh, and, you know, I mean, for me, it really underscores the, um, the sad state that we have, uh, devolved to in this country and the four conditions that black people have to deal with white supremacy 
institutional racism, individual bigotry, and mass denial. Um, and the fact that, that this man has a political career at all is, a, is an indication of how, uh, in many cases, backwards you know, we, are, we, we are as a society. So um, you know, I, I scratch my head much like you do. I know, I know. You know, you and you and I were talking uh, before I turned on the record button, and I was just asking you, how do you keep your hope? So why don't why don't you talk about? Because I'm going to keep I'm going to keep doing what I do, and I know you're going to keep doing what you do. But how is it that you keep putting one foot in front of the other? Well, in my case, I've been doing this now for about 53 years, uh, ever since I emerged out of federal prison, uh, and. Uh, two things, or well, three things. One, the people themselves. I mean, engaging people, uh, working with people, being inspired by people. Two, we have had successes and are having successes. Um, and we need to celebrate them. We need to acknowledge them. We need to uh, you know, promote them. And then finally, my belief that we live in the richest country in the world. We can have a just, fair, and equitable society. I have three basic beliefs. One, that people make a difference if you go to them. It's not enough to have a good idea that you keep in the room. That the essence of democracy is inclusion and participation. And third, that we live in the richest country in the world. We can have a just, fair, and equitable society. So it ain't like we can't afford it. Um, and so the combination of the people, uh, our successes, uh, and me developing these, these series of beliefs um, have kept me going for these 52 years, or 53 years. I'm 76 years old. I've lived oh. three quarters of a century. I've lived through, uh, in one time in the, I, this, this course I teach at UCLA, you know, the, the young people were curious about how many presidents I've lived through. And we counted them off, 14, starting, wow. from, starting from Harry Truman through um, uh, Biden. Uh, and I worked in six presidential campaigns, um, you know, and so, the, but the combination of the, the people's, our successes, and my beliefs. That's amazing. Well, Greg Achille, the young folks and the people that I know that you associate with call you Baba, Baba. Achille. And I think that that, that, that you are you have well deserved that that's a title it's a title to yes. honor someone um an elder in the community and clearly you are an elder i had no idea until recently. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today and i hope that um people will people listening to this will look deeper into how we are militarizing this nation for the purposes of controlling populations within the nation for no yep. other reason. And then and, and making people fear increased crime when in fact crime is at an almost an all time low. Oh, yep. And I do want to give a shout out. Uh, October 11th is an, our National Day of Action to stop police brutality and to stop cop nation. You know, here in LA, we're going to do, be doing a series of things. We start off with a press conference at the at the police headquarters. We're going then we're going to city council to register our opposition to the proposed police chief Jim McDonald, and we're going to do our regular. Uh, in police association, which we normally do on Wednesday, we're doing on Tuesday now. And then we're going to end at the um, uh, school board where uh, the school board is voting um, uh, to take black out of the black student achievement plan uh, because of a, a group from a, a, a white ring group from Virginia uh, is threatening to sue them. And so we're planning a full day of action um, to educate, engage and involve people to, to stop police brutality and to stop cop nations. Greg Akila, it's been a pleasure. As thank usual, you. you always educate. <laughs> well, thank you, and I appreciate this time. All righty. Thank All you, right. and hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Now get your... Thank you for sticking around. If you like the LA Progressive content and the discussions we have here, please consider clicking the subscribe button below and also give us a thumbs up. That helps to grow our audience by feeding the algorithm, which helps to get this content in front of more eyes. Thanks for stopping by. We really appreciate your support.